What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. Moving on to another question dealing with triangles. So we are given this triangle that has the vertices A at negative six, negative three, B negative one and five, and then C at 15 and negative five. And a couple of questions dealing with this triangle. So first in part A, we have to verify that it's a right triangle or that it contains an angle of 90 degrees. Part B, we have to find the circumcenter of this triangle using the two right bisectors of the smaller side. So if you remember the circumcenter, it's the point of intersection of all three right or perpendicular bisectors of each side. But we're just gonna be using the two right bisectors of the smaller sides. And then in part C, we have to verify that that circumcenter that we found in part B using the smaller sides is gonna be the midpoint of the hypotenuse. If you remember, we went over a video where we discussed the different cases of the circumcenter, it could be within the triangle, it could be on the triangle, if it's a right triangle, which we're gonna go through in this video, and then it could be outside of the triangle, if the triangle has an obtuse angle, right? So we're dealing with that second case in more detail in this particular video. So that's what we're doing here. And then in part D, we have to find the ortho center of the triangle without using any algebra. So part D is actually gonna be really easy. I'm just gonna show it through a diagram because there's a specific case for any right triangle of where that ortho center is gonna be located. So I'm gonna show that through a diagram, but we'll discuss that once we get to that part. So let's start off with, um, with part A. We have to verify that this here is gonna be a right triangle. If you remember, there's multiple ways to do that. We've gone through a video where we had to verify a right triangle with multiple methods in that same video. I'm just gonna use one of the methods. Maybe your teacher wants a particular method, so you can do that with this uh, particular question. The two methods that I've been going through is we can find these slopes of each side and then if two of the slopes are negative reciprocals of one another, then we know that those two sides are perpendicular or that they have a 90 degree angle between them. So if we get a slope of M over here and then we get a perpendicular slope for this side, then we verify that it's a right triangle. So for example, if we get a slope maybe of like two over three here, and then this side is a slope of negative three over two, just that is enough to verify that it's a right triangle, that there's a 90 degree angle between two of the sides. Another way to do it is you could find the lengths of each side, and then if those lengths hold in the Pythagoras theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then you verify that it's a right triangle that way. So this could be a, this would be b, this would be c, it doesn't matter if this is a or this is b, just as long as that hypotenuse is C, the longest side is C. And then if you find the lengths and then the Pythagoras theorem holds, that's another way to verify that it's a right triangle. So multiple ways to do it. Again, I'm gonna only do one of the ways and the way that I'm actually gonna do it is I'm gonna find the slopes of uh, all three sides because we're actually gonna have to use those slopes in part B again when we're finding the circumcenter because we're gonna be using the slopes to find the equations of those right bisectors. So it's going to cut off a little time in that process, right? Versus if we found the lengths in part A, then we'd have to find the slopes in part B. So we'd be, um, the question would take longer. So the way I'm gonna do it is I'm going to find the slopes of all three sides, but if you are required, let's say, to do it this way, or you want extra practice in terms of dealing with that length formula with different points, then you could do that as well, all right? It's gonna hold either way. You could verify it either way. So again, let's, um, let's find the slopes here. So let's start off finding the slope of AB. And let's just label these points over here. So we're gonna start off with point A and point B. So this is gonna be, let's label this X1, Y1, this will be X2, Y2. Remember, what's the slope formula? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 
minus x1. So we would have y2, which is 5, minus y1, which is negative 3. Be careful with your brackets here. Over x2, which is negative 1, minus x1, which is negative 6. So this would be like 5 plus 3. The two negatives turn into a positive, so that would give us 8. And then we'll have negative 1 minus negative 6, which is like negative 1 plus 6, which would give us positive 5. So that right there is going to be the slope of the side AB. So I'm going to keep track of these slopes over here just because we're going to use them throughout the question. Okay, so that's the slope of AB. So let's find the slope now of AC. So we already have the point A over here. So the point C is going to be 15, negative 5, x2, y2, like that. So we would have y2, which is negative 5, minus y1, which is negative 3. Put that in brackets over x2, which is 15, minus x1, which is negative 6. So this here. Negative 5 minus negative 3 is like negative 5 plus 3, and that would be negative 2. 15 minus negative 6 is like 15 plus 6, which would give us, what, 21? Positive 21. And then this doesn't simplify any further. All right, so that right there is the slope of AC. So notice that the two slopes we found so far they're not negative reciprocals of one another. So hopefully the slope of BC is going to be a negative reciprocal of one of these because if it's not, then we're going to have a problem on our hands in terms of verifying this. So we already have the point C. Let's deal with the point B. Got x1, y1. So same thing, so y2, which is negative 5, minus y1, which is positive 5. x2, which is 15, minus x1, which is negative 1. So this would end up being what? Negative 10 over 15 plus 1, which is 16. Negative 10 over 16, notice that that simplifies. We could divide this by 2, divide that by 2, so we'd have negative 5 over 8. So that is the slope of BC, which is negative 5 over 8. Notice that negative 5 over 8 is indeed the negative reciprocal of 8 over 5. So the line or the side AB is perpendicular to the side BC. And just from those two values right there, this could have been anything over here, the slope AC. Just from those two slopes, because they're negative reciprocals, we verified that it's a right triangle, right? So that's all you have to do for part A. And now that we actually know which, um, which sides are perpendicular, we can make a diagram here in terms of the actual points. So we know AB and BC so B is the coordinate that's common in both, so this would be B over here. So we'd have A, and then over here we'd have C, right? A, B, and B, C are the two perpendicular sides. And then A, C is the hypotenuse side. All right, so that's why I didn't want to draw this specific diagram with these specific points before finding this, because I didn't know which sides are going to be perpendicular. So for example, let's say we had AB and AC be perpendicular. Then the diagram would be different, right? If AB and AC were perpendicular, uh, A would be the common point here. So we'd have AB, AC, like that. And then BC would be the hypotenuse. All right, but in this specific case, AB, BC are the perpendicular sides. So that's how the uh, diagram would look. This is not to scale on a Cartesian plane. If you did draw it on a Cartesian plane, then perhaps you can see a little more clearly before even doing any work where the um, 90 degree angle would be. 
but this is just a rough drawing I'm making here. So I wanted to get these values first before making the rough drawing, but now let's label these points and we can use this diagram as a reference throughout the question. So now moving on to part B, what we got to do is we have to find the circumcenter of this, um, this triangle here and the circumcenter, it's the point of intersection of the right bisectors or the perpendicular bisectors of each side. And more specifically in part B, we're only going to use two of the bisectors, right bisectors, and the ones we're going to use are the bisectors of the smaller sides. Because if you remember from that video where we went through the, um, the different cases of the circumcenter, for a right triangle, the circumcenter for a right triangle is always going to be the midpoint of the hypotenuse. Because if you draw the right bisectors of these smaller sides, notice that they're going to intersect, right? We're going to have the right bisector here, the right bisector here. And they're always going to intersect over here at the midpoint of the hypotenuse. So in part B, if it just said find the circumcenter, because you know you're dealing with a right triangle, you could just find the midpoint of AC, and then that would be all the work you have to do. But in this specific case, we're gonna verify this property. So we're gonna find these two right bisectors, find the point of intersection between them. And then in part C, we're gonna find the midpoint of AC, and then verify that the two points we get are the same, or are the, uh, are the circumcenter. All right, so we're just verifying that case of where in a right triangle, the midpoint of the hypotenuse is always going to be the circumcenter. So we got to find these two right bisectors here. So let's start off with the um, right bisector for A, B, this one over here. Now notice we already have the slope of A, B. The slope of A, B is 8 over 5. And what is, so what's, the slope of AB is this over here. That's eight over five. So what's the slope of the right bisector gonna be? Well, it's gonna be the negative reciprocal of this. So the slope of the right bisector is gonna be negative five over eight. It's actually the same slope as BC because notice in the diagram, this and this, they're actually gonna be parallel, right? this right bisector and side BC are parallel. So that's always gonna happen in a right triangle. The right bisector here is gonna be parallel to this side. The right bisector here is gonna be parallel to that side. So that's gonna be the slope of the right bisector. What else do we need? Well, we need this midpoint over here. That's all that's missing. Once we have the midpoint, then we can find the equation of that line. So the midpoint, of AB. Now what is the midpoint formula? It's x1 plus x2 divided by 2, the sum of the x values divided by 2, the sum of the y values divided by 2. So we'd have negative uh, 6 plus negative 1, that's going to be divided by 2. Then we'll have y1, which is negative 3, plus 5, that's going to be divided by 2. Okay, it doesn't matter which one is x1, y1, x2, y2. You just gotta sum up the x values, sum up the y values, take the average of them. So this would be negative six plus negative one, which is like negative six minus one, which is negative seven over two, negative three plus five, which is positive two over two, gives us one. So this point here, this midpoint, it has a coordinate negative seven over two and one. Right, so now we have, we basically have to find the equation of a line that has a slope negative five over eight and goes through the point negative seven over two and one. So doing that, we'll have y equals mx plus b, so let's plug in the slope. Right, you could also use that formula y2 minus y1 equals mx, 
um, minus x1. Bring everything to one side, isolate for the y. If you do that, just make sure you're getting the same value or the same equation that I'm going to get. So the y would be 1, and then we'd plug in negative 7 over 2 for the x, and then we'll have plus b. So this would be negative 5 times negative 7 would give us what? Positive 35. 8 times 2, 16 plus b. Now this 1, I'm going to change to be 16 over 16 because we're going to bring this over, right? So the b value would be 16 over 16 minus 35 over 16. Just to keep a common denominator, 16 minus 35 uh, would give us what? Negative 19. And that's going to be over 16. Right? Yeah, it looks fine to me. So the perpendicular bisector of AB, let's keep track of it over here. It's going to be y equals negative 5 over 8x minus 19 over 16. Right? We're going to need that once we have this equation. So that's this equation over here. Then we're going to have to get this equation of this perpendicular bisector and then find the point of intersection between them. Right, so we're done that. Um, let's, uh, let's now find the perpendicular bisector of BC. So notice we already have the slope of BC, which is negative 5 over 8. So what's the perpendicular slope going to be? The negative reciprocal of that. We flip it, change the sign, 8 over 5. As mentioned, it's the same slope of AB, right? This and this are parallel. So we have the slope we're going to work with. Now we just need this midpoint over here, the point that the perpendicular bisector is going to go through. So the midpoint of BC, we got to add up the x value. So we'll have negative 1 plus 15. That's going to be divided by 2. And then we'll have 5 plus negative 5. Add up the y values divided by 2. Yeah, looks good to me. So negative 1 plus 15, that would give us what? Positive 14 over 2. This here, 5 plus negative 5 is like 5 minus 5, which gives us 0. And so we'd end up with 7 and 0. So 7 and 0 is the, um, it's the midpoint between B and C. Okay, so that's a nice point to work with. Uh, so we have this slope. So basically we got to find the equation of a line with a slope 8 over 5 that goes through the point 7 and 0. So we got y equals 8 over 5x plus b. Plug in 0 for y. Plug in uh, 7 for x. Yeah, plug in 7 for x, and then over here, this would end up being 7 over 1, 56 over 5, plus b, bring this over, so the b value would be negative 56 over 5. And then that right there, it doesn't simplify any further. So, the right bisector of bc is 8 over 5x minus 56 over 5, like that. So that's this equation over here. And now what we got to do is find the point of intersection between those two right bisectors, and that's going to give us our circumstance. So finding the point of intersection between these two, multiple ways to go about it. We can make them both equal. We can also maybe multiply everything in each equation to get rid of the fractions, then maybe do elimination. Either way, with these specific equations, I think you're going to be doing a lot of algebra. So let's, uh, let's just make them equal. So we'll have negative 5 over 8x minus 19 over 16 equals 8 over 5x minus 56 over 5. All right, so 
from here, you can, we can bring this over, right? The, all the X's to one side, all the numbers to the other, simplify both sides and divide whatever's in front of the X. What I'm actually gonna do at this point is multiply everything by the lowest common denominator to get rid of the fractions at this point. So we're just working with numbers. You don't necessarily have to do this. Again, there's multiple ways to find the point of intersection between these two lines, whichever way you're comfortable with doing, just make sure that you're getting the same value at the end. So I'm gonna multiply everything here at this point. So notice that the lowest common denominator between eight, 16, and five is 80. So we can multiply this by 80, this by 80, that by 80, and then this by 80 over here. So notice eight goes into 80 10 times, 10 times negative five X is negative 50 X. 16 goes into 80 five times, five times 19, 95. Five goes into 80 16 times, 16 times eight would give us what, 128? And there's an X in front. Minus five goes into 80 16 times, and then 16 times 56 would give us 896, like that. Okay, and now from here, we can bring all of the X's to one side, all the numbers to the other. So bringing this over, we'll have 128X plus 50X. Right, and then bringing this over, we'll have negative 95 plus eight, uh, 96, like that. So this here would give us 178X, and then this over here would give us 801. Right? Yeah. And then from here, we can divide both sides by 178, divide this by 178. So basically, the x value is going to be 801 over 178, like that. And then we could simplify this over here and actually, both of these, if you go through it, you could divide by a bunch of small numbers, but both of these are actually going to divide if you do a little trial and error, if you want to get the largest number right away. They're both going to divide by, um, they're gonna divide by 89, actually. Right? You could take 801 divided by 89, 178 divided by 89, and that's going to give us nine over two, like that. And so that's what the X value would end up being. So we have the X value. Now what we gotta do is find the corresponding Y value. We could plug this X value into either or, I'll plug it into the first one. So we'll have negative five over eight times nine over two minus uh, 19 over 16, like that. So this would end up being negative 45 over 16 minus 19 over 16, like that. And then negative 45 minus 19 would give us negative 64. That's gonna be over 16. And then negative 64 divided by 16 would actually give us a nice value of negative four. So the point of intersection between these two lines or the two perpendicular bisectors is nine over two and negative four. And that's the answer for part B. That's all the work for part B. So quite a lot of algebra with these specific equations over here to get this. So this point, the circumcenter is nine over two and negative four and we found it by finding the point of intersection between these two 
right bisectors as we were required to do in, um, in part B. Now in part C, we just have to verify that property now that the circumcenter of a right triangle is going to be the midpoint of the hypotenuse. So part C is really easy. We just have to find the midpoint of side AC, which is the hypotenuse in this case. So what would we do? Add up the X values divided by two, add up the Y values, and divide it by two. Negative six plus 15, positive nine, that's gonna be over two. Negative three plus negative five is like negative three minus five, which gives us negative eight over two. And notice we get that exact value that we got in part B, right? with the point of intersection between those two right bisectors. So again, if they didn't ask you to specifically find these and then find that point, it'd be a lot easier to just do this to find that circumcenter, right? So maybe if this is like a multiple choice question and you're dealing with a right triangle, they ask you to find the circumcenter, just find the midpoint of the hypotenuse, right? It's gonna be a lot quicker to do it this way. It's just in this particular video, it took longer because we were verifying that property. But nevertheless, we did verify it. We got that same circumcenter with two different methods. Now in part D, what we gotta do is we have to find the orthocenter. And remember, we're gonna do this without any algebra. Now in finding the orthocenter of a right triangle, it's actually very easy. Remember, what is an orthocenter? An orthocenter is the point of intersection of the altitudes of a triangle. So let's forget about a right triangle for now. Let's just draw an acute triangle. So the altitude from here, what is an altitude? It's basically the line from a vertex to the opposite side where the altitude and the opposite side are perpendicular. So from here to here, from this vertex, it would be like, let's say right there. Then from this vertex, it would just be straight down. Right, so that would be the, um, the orthocenter right there. Okay, so remember altitude is different from right bisector because it's not necessarily gonna go through that midpoint of the opposite side. Okay, it's gonna go through the opposite vertex and then the point on the opposite side where it's gonna be perpendicular to that opposite side. Right? We've gone through videos of how to find altitudes before. But that's with an acute triangle. What's gonna happen with a right triangle? So let's start off by finding the altitude from this vertice over here that's attached to that 90 degrees. Well, if we draw the altitude to the opposite side, it's gonna look something like that, right? Right, this is just a line over here. Anyway, that's the altitude from this vertex. What's the altitude from this vertex gonna be? Well, notice that it's just gonna be this side over here, right? Because this side is already perpendicular to this side to the opposite side of this vertex. We're drawing the altitude from this vertex. The opposite side of this vertex is this side over here. And notice that this line is already perpendicular to that side. And then same thing here, the altitude from this vertex is the line from that vertex to the opposite side where it's going to be perpendicular. So notice that the altitude is just this side over here. So with a right triangle, the altitude from this vertex is this side. And the altitude from this vertex is actually this side. And then the altitude from this vertex is this line over here. Where do they all intersect? They actually intersect at this point over here. Okay. So that point in our specific case with the triangle that we're dealing with was point B. And point B is negative one and five. So that's the answer 
to part D. And we did it without any algebra. We just showed it through a diagram. The orthocenter for any right triangle, as I explained here, is always just going to be that vertice C right there. So another potential communication question or a quick multiple choice question where, where they will give you the coordinates of a right triangle and then they'll ask for the orthocenter. You don't have to do all the work in finding the altitudes and whatnot. You can just know that it's going to be that uh, vertice right there. And this only works for a right triangle, right? For any other triangle, as we showed with the acute triangle drawing, you're going to have to do more work. But with a specific right triangle, for any right triangle, the orthocenter is always going to be the vertex that's attached to that 90 degrees.